Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and we've got some breaking PSVR news right now that I just wanted to cover really quick before I go to work. No Man's Sky Origins updates has been detailed, it has released, it's out now, you can download it for your uh, No Man's Sky for free. Free updates, No Man's Sky Origins, they dropped a trailer, they've dropped a blog post detailing the stuff. Let's watch the trailer first and then we'll go into the details on the blog post and we'll see what kind of crazy stuff they've added. Uh, it looks like some really cool stuff. Before we hit play here, let's just read the description real quick. It's short. The Origins updates dramatically expands the universe of No Man's Sky. Explore a stranger, richer, and more varied universe with deeper planetary diversity, dramatic new terrain, a host of new creatures, which is cool, new weather conditions, colossal buildings, and much, much more. Let's give this the old taser mode. And uh, we'll hit play. And we'll pause as we see some stuff. A little bit of an analysis, even though I don't know too much about No Man's Sky. I don't know all the details. Every planet unique. Straight away, that big insect. Uh, that looks like it could be new. I don't remember seeing big giant insects. Or like blue, blue bottle looking flies or whatever. Perhaps these trees are new too. I'm not too, I'm not familiar enough with No Man's Sky to know if these are all new as well. Uh, but I'm assuming when they're showing them off in this trailer, there's a good chance they're new. Okay, some very purple looking grass. Got that insect flying around again. It's quite big. Whoa. Okay. Let's go back a little bit there because that was like a quick cut. When he lands, get ready to pause. Let's go frame by frame. Okay, that was the first shot here. Uh, it seems to be highlighting either this large structure, which could be one of those colossal buildings that was down in the description. Colossal building, maybe? Or maybe it's highlighting this plant here, I don't know. Next quick flash was, I'm guessing, to highlight this big blue thing. Maybe it's a plant, but he seems to be walking on it. So quite large. And then we got the big mech. I think the mechs were added in uh, previous updates. So I don't think those are new. And then we cut back. Okay, this, I've never seen this before in No Man's Sky, maybe, again, it's not new, I'm not too sure, uh, but this looks pretty crazy, whatever the hell it is. No Man's Sky, oranges, as Sean Murray has been teasing on Twitter. Some very purple grass, is the purple grass new? Alright, we've got more quick cuts there, let's go back. Okay. Um, interesting. I was gonna say yellow grass, but look, everything is kind of yellow here. Is this like a weather effect? This could be one of the new weather effects. Some kind of toxic environment. Interesting looking plants. Uh, we've got that weird blue thing again. I think that's what he was running on earlier on, whatever the hell this thing is. I don't know if it's a plant or a creature. I think it's a plant. Or flora. And then what was that? That was hard to... This is kind of very foggy. I don't know, is fog a new thing? Maybe that's what they're highlighting here, or maybe it's these weird looking things in the background. Everything looks so strange and alien, it's hard to know. All right, we're flying. It's a very dark looking planet. Ooh, another series of quick cuts, keeping me on my toes. Boom, okay, go back. That looked like a gone through a tunnel or something. What was that? Is he just flying through an asteroid or something? Yeah, he just shot a hole in the asteroid he's flying through. Which I think you can do anyway, but maybe the highlight here is the ship. This is a pretty funky looking ship with the triple thrusters going on there. Next scene. These are exploding. I'm not sure what's setting these explosions off. I don't see him shooting anything. So that's interesting. And then we have this ship, which seems to be crash. Is this going to crash land to the surface and then you got to track it down and see what's going on? Looks like it's in trouble. All right. It's a weird looking thing over here. Was oh, that the Nexus? Oh, shit, look at these. We've got some large space jellyfish. 
And when I mean large, I mean, when you put everything into perspective here, these are like planet-sized jellyfish, right? Or, you know, really big. I wonder, like, can you interact with them in any way? Will they do damage to your ship or can you shoot them down for resources or whatever? Uh, okay. Is this... These kind of look like volcano-y looking landscape here. I wonder, is that new? We've got some space combat here, another funky looking ship. Lasers. Oh. This is the big moment. A big giant flying worm and it digs into the ground. I don't know if anyone remembers like when they first teased off No Man's Sky they had these giant space worm things. Well not space worms but like giant snakes or worms. I can't remember what they were. But I think they were they burrowed into the ground and that was one of the things that they lied about basically. I mean I'm sure they had them. They just couldn't get them into the game for whatever reason. But now four years later we've got our worms. We've got worms. How cool are they going to look in virtual reality? And then we've got the sweeping shots to end it all. And that soundtrack, which is unbelievably good. So let's move on to the blog post over here, No Man's Sky Origins. There's quite a bit to go through. It's actually very long, long much longer than I thought. I thought this update was going to be small. They described it as the beginning of something new which kind of suggested to me that it was just going to be like the foundations for more future, future updates to build upon. But no, it's quite substantial. So let's just get through it. Update 3.0 Origins. Update 3.0, by the way, that's a significant, like, you know, full number. Uh, so that's kind of a hint that this is a big update. So it dramatically expands the universe of No Man's Sky. Explore a stranger, richer, and more varied universe with deeper planetary blah, blah, blah. We've read this already in the PlayStation uh, YouTube video description. So let's go down. So, point number one, we got new planets. Existing solar systems have birthed new planets, creating millions of untouched new worlds to explore. So, if I'm reading that correctly, let's say you already have a home, like a home star system. There's going to be new planets in that star system when you go in. Maybe not every single one, but judging by this, they're just going to appear. Uh, new types of planets. Let me get some images here of, like, I guess... The new flora and fauna and stuff. Purple grass. We've got like a volcano looking thing down here. Which we saw in the trailer of course. But we didn't see that like a, at a distance like this. Um, clouds look nice here. We've got some dead trees and stuff like that in this one. Purple kind of environment looks nice. And then this one kind of looks like it's underwater even though it's not. Anyway. Next point then is binary and ternary stars. Ternary? Am I saying that correctly? Binary is two, ternary must be three. Some rare systems are now home to multiple stars, creating stunning new patterns in the sky. Oh cool, so some some solar systems are gonna have a few suns now. Well not suns, but stars. I know the sun is a star, but you know what I mean. So you got one, one sun, two suns, even though the sun is the name of our star, not necessarily the name of all of them, I get it. Uh, but it's not gonna stop me from calling them suns. Uh, but that's cool. So I wonder what like the sky is going to look like on these worlds. Like how does sunset look? Like one sun sets and the other one is still up. Next up, dramatic landscapes. Uh, these new worlds have vast sweeping terrain. Their mountains and vistas are on a colossal new scale, giving shape to more dramatic, awe-inspiring scenery than ever before. Oh, this kind of answers my question. You can kind of see the two suns. I think, or maybe that's a lens reflection, or lens flare, or whatever. Uh, whilst flora, fauna, and atmosphere conditions have changed throughout the universe, Existing worlds will retain their old character, allowing player bases to remain untouched. So it looks like all the worlds you've already explored, they won't be touched. Same plants, same fauna, same atmosphere conditions, all that stuff. So I'm guessing it's just those new planets that they're talking about that have been birthed. They're the ones that are going to have all the new cool stuff on it. it. Looks like the main reason for that being not to mess with player bases. Which is smart choice. Uh, oh, we got a nice shot here of the big sandworm. That looks pretty terrifying. I wonder, can this thing eat you in VR? Anyway, 
Next point, user interface refresh, nice. Interface and menus have been totally overhauled with new colors and styles for a fresh new aesthetic. Doesn't look a whole lot different from what I remember, but I don't play this game enough to like remember the details. Oh, this looks different. Uh, the scanner that's in your helmet looks different. This is probably maybe some quality of life changes here, nothing too big, I imagine, but still nice that they went to the trouble of touching up the UI. Four years later, richer diversity is next up. New life has been breathed into every planet in the universe. Okay, so it's not just the new planets. So new life is in every planet in the universe now. A huge range of never before seen planetary flora and curiosities have been poured into the galaxy. Countless strange new combinations are out there awaiting discovery. I guess we get a shot of like some crazy new plants. Um, ooh, this looks pretty cool. I can't, I'm trying to make these bigger, but it doesn't let you click on them. Uh, but this screenshot here looks really nice. Looks like some bioluminescent kind of plants and a red grass or whatever. Here it looks pretty toxic, this yellow environment, and then over here it looks like, man, this looks really nice too. Dead trees, but it looks very dusky, sunset-y kind of a look. And then you can see that planet, that ringed planet on the horizon. Pretty stunning looking. Next up then is alien fauna. Discover strange new species of fauna. This alien wildlife can be encountered roaming the terrain, rolling along us, or even burrowing on through us. That which is of course referenced in that giant worm. All may be harvested for edible produce. There you go, you can eat them. Kill them, eat them. Here we see some kind of half turtle, half Cthulhu looking creature, which is pretty cool. And it kind of looks a little bit cute, if I do say so myself. I'm not too sure what I'm looking at here. Looks like some weird pink things flying in the sky. Let me get a closer look. Yeah, they just kind of look like like fish that fly in the sky, I guess. Fishy looking things, like, you know, still aliens. Uh, not too sure what the hell this thing is either. Looks pretty scary. And then you got more large flying things. This screenshot here looks really cool. Uh, oh, we got a look at a volcano that seems to be like active. Smoke coming out of it. Uh, so I'm guessing this is like a high danger zone maybe. Maybe the heat temperatures here are like out of control. Anyway, next point then is cloud and weather variety. So cloud rendering quality has been significantly improved and the range of cloud cover has been expanded, creating more variety between clear skies and overcast planets. Oh, we got a slider here we can mess around with. Okay. These are some nice looking clouds, I won't lie. I guess this is before, this is after. Is what I'm guessing they're going for here. Cloud coverage and color now varies over time and the clouds seen from space now match the current atmospheric conditions of the planet below. That's cool. So yeah, that's pretty cool that what you see from space is actually gonna be reflected on what you see when you land on the planet's surface, I guess. So you'll get an idea of what that planet is like atmospherically just from looking at it from a distance, which is nice. This video here just shows the ship going through the cloud. Well, I say video, it's a GIF and it's a very slow running GIF. So for reasons that are not known to me, uh, it's just taken ages to load up. I've been sitting here for like a few minutes waiting for this thing to finish, but it's just not doing us. I don't know why, uh, but look, it looks cool. These are some really nice, realistic looking clouds. You know, the white fluffy ones, you know, the nice ones. Marshes. A number of fertile worlds have formed swamps and marshes thick with mist and luminous fungal growths. Sounds very appetizing. And so here's an example, I guess. Bunch of new funguses, uh, you know, mists, luminous stuff, swamps. Uh, I guess this is just like a brand new type of biome, maybe? Swamp lands, marsh lands. Uh, so that's always nice, a new bit of diversity there. Next up, increased color variety. So the palette of colors for planetary generation has been increased, creating more possible variations than ever before. And I guess this is where we get these stunning kind of purple grass landscapes. I'm a big fan of that. More purple grass, and then we got like this cool environment too. It looks like blue grass. Uh, next up, improved teleporters. So the teleporter interface has been improved. The UI is now consistent with the space anomaly teleporter. And now offers more information available about the target planets or system prior to warp. Uh, sounds good to me. I don't know too much about it, but uh, I like the sound of it. Photo mode. So photo mode has been revamped with new filters and increased control over clouds, fog, vignettes and depth of field. 
all sound very nice. If you're big into your photo mode, you got some examples playing in the background, I guess, here with this GIF. Next up, Colossal Archive Buildings. So these are enormous buildings that have risen on planetary horizons, creating new hubs of alien life. These huge vaults are repositories of data, treasure, and directions to long forgotten ruins. So it looks like you're gonna to wanna to check out these large buildings if you wanna like, you know, scope out some goodies, I guess. Historical stories. So visit the Colossal Archive building to uncover new cultural and literary histories hidden away by ancient alien civilizations. Man, this update is big. A lot of stuff going on here. Uh, next up is infestations. So a number of planets have become infested with anomalous life forms and vegetative growths. Take extreme caution while exploring such planets. Okay. So we got some dangerous planets now. Dangerous flora and fauna. Uh, I know there's already dangerous stuff in the game already, but like a whole planet's taken over. Man, these like these screenshots look very... The landscapes look very dramatic now. Dark clouds and stuff like that looks really cool. New lighting conditions. So the range of atmospheric illumination has been broadened, generating more unique combinations of lighting conditions on planets. Man, this is such a big, this is so much big update. They're overhauling lightning and stuff like this now. Anomalous buildings. So abandoned and ancient settlements can be discovered on dead or anomalous planets, increasing the range of planets available for missions and exploration. Volcanoes, they get their own little bullet point. So tectonic disruption has stimulated the molten cores of some planets, giving rise to active volcanic mountains. Uh, that's cool. Not something I ever would have thought like to ask for, but I'm very glad that they're there. Who doesn't want a volcano in their game? Firestorms. Uh, maybe a bit insensitive in 2020, am I right? Uh, storms on extreme temperature worlds now sometimes ignite fire on the planet's surface. All insensitivity aside, this is really cool. Like, it's a really cool looking environment. Oh man, some more gifts. Okay, this one's playing a little bit better, but... I don't know what the, why they're not playing as smoothly as they should. Storm gameplay effects. So, advancements in exosuits and multi tomb technology enable beneficial effects from storms. Blizzards allow you to mine for longer with a cooled mining beam, print further in toxic storms with assistance from exosuit gas processing technology, benefit from increased jetpack efficiency in superheated atmospheres, and mine additional substances during times of high radioactivity. That's cool. So it's not just, it's not just this thing that, like a visual effect and maybe a negative effect on like some of your meters or your health bars. This is actually going to change gameplay. You're going to put like a bit of strategy into like, hey, maybe I should be mining on a cold planet because my mining beam will last for longer because the cold atmosphere will keep my multi-tool cooled for longer. Uh, that's really cool. That's a really cool idea. A uh, really smart idea. New items and crafting. Crafting has been streamlined with a number... Oh, that's, I like the sound of that. Uh, that's uh, that's one of those things that are keeping me away. I'm not too big on crafting myself in any game. Uh, so the more streamlined, the better. So, sorry. Crafting has been streamlined with a number of rarely used items trimmed to reduce inventory clutter. Other frequently used items have had their inventory stack size increased, which is always nice. New caches of resources may now be found underground ready to dismantle into usable parts and is this a tornado i see before me i think that's new that's pretty cool looking enhanced terrain detail explore more visually pleasing landscapes with enhanced terrain rendering and we'll get to slide this across i guess maybe not uh, this kind of looks like it should be something you slide across but for reasons unknown to me it's not letting me do that Always. It's doing it by itself, that's why it's a gif. Noise, normal, heights, and specular maps are now used, and blending between geometry normals and tile normals has been improved, con contributing to more detailed terrain, especially at long distances. Uh, I'm not sure what they mean with all this normal stuff. Uh, it sounds like technical game developer jargon to me. Uh, but I understand enhanced terrain detail which I guess is all I need to understand. This really skipped to the end. What happened to the middle part? Anyway, we'll take their word for it, all right? There's enhanced terrain detail going on here. Uh, and I like that it's at long distance too. 
Next up is enhanced planet quality settings. So on PC, the ultra setting for planet quality has been upgraded, improving the appearance and detail of grass and flora at a distance. This is no good for us on PS Viewer. You switch things to ultra and boom, you get that. Exploration guide. The mission log now features a local information register providing detailed information about the current system or planet. The log also assists explorers to track down a full range of flora, fauna and minerals to discover on each planet. I guess that's handy for those of you who want to know such things. Man, this keeps going. This keeps going. Portal interference lifted. Travelers may now slip through portals and explore their destinations freely. No portal interference. An infinite universe has become more accessible. I don't even know what a portal interference is, uh, but I guess I don't have to worry about that because it's gone. It's lifted. Cool snowy environment here with that weird ball thing that we saw in the trailer. I don't know, is this somebody's home base or what? Is this in the distance? I can't tell. Meteors. Okay. Meteors can be observed crashing through the atmosphere of planets. Witness brilliant meteor showers or lone choosing stars streaking across the sky, but be careful not to get too close. Man, this is sounds this sounds fantastic. This sounds fantastic. I'm guessing these are the meteors over here. Uh, even though they're not really the focus of the shot here, I don't think. Uh, but it's just so cool that you can you can get too close to them. Uh, I'd love to like see a meteor crash down, track down where it landed, find the actual thing, maybe harvest it from whatever minerals or whatever you want. That's the part that kind of bores me about is the minerals and all that shit, but still, cool. Gravitational anomalies. Anomalous planets can exhibit sudden gravitational shifts, allowing dramatic flights through a low gravity environment. Man, that is cool. This is crazy. Tornadoes, confirmed. Powerful tornadoes now spiral across planets during the strongest storms, scooping up any unfortunate fauna or explorers who cross their paths. I want to get scooped up into a tornado while I'm in virtual reality. I want to see what happens. Lightning. Damn, that lightning looks vicious. Uh, storms now split the sky with powerful bolts of lightning. Enjoy the spectacle, but avoid getting struck. So it's not just, again, all this stuff is not just like visual flair, it's gameplay. Uh, implications for everything here. Planetary NPC encounters. Black market traders piloting their ships across planets will now sometimes land on the planetary surface. Explorers can approach these dealers to browse their selection of contraband technology upgrades. The space station scrap dealer will now exchange Pugnium for their own selection of black market goods. Okay, I'll take your word for that. Discovery menu improvements is next. Discovery page now offers tools to filter, sort, and hide, which is nice quality of life improvements there, I guess. Uh, other improvements include more detailed information to help locate certain creatures and more easily accessible information about your planetary bases. The multi-tool has got upgrades. We're still going. We're still going. We're still scrolling. My finger's getting sore here. Visit the multi-tool upgrade station on space stations to upgrade the class of your multi-tool or expand its technology capacity by adding more slots. Okay, insect life. This is a separate thing, apparently. I assume this will be included as part of the like uh, fauna. Discover giant beetles scuttling across planets and buzzing through the skies, as well as huge, soft-winged butterflies fluttering to land and flora, flora and terrain. I'm sure those giant butterflies look pretty, pretty, pretty. I guess just pretty. Next up is wild robots. So rare uncharted planets are now home to synthetic creatures wandering wild across terrain on metallic legs. Gonna have some Horizon Zero Dawn crossover events going on in here it looks like. We're still going. Improved creature behavior. So in addition to the new burrowing, rolling and flying creatures, flocking behaviors for all fauna have been improved. Herd sizes have increased, and flying creatures can now be seen much closer to the ground. Sandworms. Devastatingly huge worm creatures now lurk beneath the planet's surface. Tread carefully. Man, I, can't, I want that. I want to be eaten by a sandworm. Um, and then there's patch notes. Which I feel like we just went through the patch notes, but I guess these are more like detailed or just in text form. Uh, traders, user interface, photo mode, crafting, multi-tool, portal. Okay, so most of this is... Go okay, then the other fixes is like a 2,000 word essay down here about other fixes that I'm not going to go through. That's too much. It is too much. 
Wow, I've been recording for 30 minutes. I expected this to be like a 10 minute video, but because this was so in depth, so detailed, that's how long this fucking thing went on for. Now, of course, I'm gonna edit that down. It's gonna be shorter than 30 minutes when I put it up. This is crazy, crazy updates. Makes me want to go back to No Man's Sky. Even though when I go back to No Man's Sky, I'm usually like, ah, oh, this is very overwhelming. I don't like the craft and I don't like resource, like survival, stuff like that. Uh, but maybe just to relax. Uh, playing create mode where you can go like instant infinite like resources and stuff like that and just mess around with sandworms or like giant butterflies whatever that sounds like rise up my alley uh, i'll definitely check this out let me know what you thought about this in the comments below and i will end this video there but before i do let me give a huge thank you to my patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak thanks to their generosity this channel can remain moist in particular, let me give a shout out to the following top tier Patreon supporters. Chapped 517, Crumb, Pete Hawkins, Tradition, and Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid. Thank you very much for that generosity. It is very much appreciated. It is very moist. If you would like to help me out on the Patreon too, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash petrifying pumpkins. Link will be in the description below. If not, be happy with likes, subscribes, comments, shares, all that usual shite. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos. Check him out over on Decepticon.com. Link to that will be in the description as well. And with that, I will end this video, this very No Man's Sky video. Until next time, stay moist.